أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرف ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أأنبئكم بخير من ذلكم للذين اتقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله Allahu basiru bil ibad Sadaqallahu al-azim Brothers and sisters who are listening Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity to come to Ahabbul biladi ilallahi To come to the most beloved place of the whole of the earth Most beloved place on the whole of the earth And for us to sit here And for us to discuss what is outside of the most beloved place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in a sahih hadith of Muslim. And of course, when you go to the bazaars, when you go to the market places, when you go outside into places where people are away from the dhikr, away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they, those places have been mentioned by our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as Abghadul bilad ilallahi aswaquha The most hatred of places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Most disliked of all places are the marketplaces Now you take the two places And you see one is the masjid where the sujood is taking place And one is the place where it's a souq And people are shopping and people are making their transactions And they're making their commerce and trade so this one where the sujood, where people are prostrating in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is known as the ahabbul bilad, most beloved of all places. So out of the whole of this area, this is the most beloved piece of land to Allah. And out of these walls, when you get to the marketplaces, those places are the most disliked uh, of places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a reason why. The reason is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a mission and He knows what is best for us. He knows what is coming in front of us, ahead of us, and He knows what is here right now. If any one of us, if any one of us saw the reality of the Akhirah, if any one of us saw the reality of the Akhirah, then we would seriously understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us, he has said in Surah Al-Ahzab O you who believe, remember Allah and remember Him a great remembrance and most abundant remembrance ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا Abundantly remember Him and by morning and by evening glorify his name and say how exalted Allah is. Morning and evening. So this ayah, if you look at it, Allah is not only asking us just to remember him. He says remember him. But remember him, a remembrance, which is maf'ul mutlaq in Arabic, which is an emphasis, remember him a lot. After saying remember him a lot, Allah says kathira. Again, he uses the word what abundantly or a lot so remember him plentifully and abundantly and then he doesn't stop there he says wa asila." in the morning and in the evening remember him as well praise him glorify him in the morning and the evening that is in terms of our remembrance with Allah why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what we're heading for Allah knows what, what we're going to do in this world the condition that he has made us in is that we being in this world automatically automatically because we are material we have got a material body to ourselves and we've got a spiritual body we've got a 
material body and we've got a spiritual body. Both are inside every single human being here. The material body pulls one way. The spiritual body pulls a different way. The material body is attachment is to this world, to this dunya, to the lowly life. See, Allah has given it the name dunya. Dunya means the close one and dunya means the low one. Akhirah means the next one and akhirah means the one that is coming after. So the dunya which is the lowly life, the material body of ours is attached to this world. And inside us the ruh and the spirit that Allah has created that is attached to the next world. Now we've got two bodies and we're working with these two bodies. And both of these bodies are going to stay until moat comes. Moat is the cessation, the ending of the relationship of the body and the spirit. See when we're here in this world, you, I'm in control, you're in control right now. Yeah? now. Do this brothers, go on, do this. Do this, go on, go do this. Hey, you remember this part of it, don't worry about it, you remember this. Yeah? <coughs> this yeah? Now the material body is in complete, complete command of the mind. The mind is part of the spiritual body. The inner part is the mind. Me and you right now, we are not this material body. Me and you, we are this spiritual body within this whole material skull that Allah has given, the eyes Allah has given. This, this eye, this eye is an amana. It's a trust from God. These ears are a trust from God. This tongue is a trust from God. Allah says what? He says, you're hearing. Sam'a, wal basara, you're seeing, and your mind, your heart, wherever is going inside. On the day of judgment, I will ask everything about your ears, about your hearing, about your seeing, about your tongue, about your heart, about your mind. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Say, O Muhammad, tell them, my Lord has prohibited, my Lord has prohibited what? Al-fawahisha ma zahara wa ma batana wal isma wal baghya. Allah has prohibited all types of sins, the outer and the inner. The outer and the inner. And this is an amana. So what happens is when moat comes, death comes, and separates the ruh from the body. Once that happens, the real self, the real Hassan, the real Muhammad and the real Ibrahim, the real Sarah, whoever the person is, comes out. And this body is a piece of a dead thing. It's a material thing. And then what happens is, this amana that Allah gave me, on the day of judgment, the body is resurrected again. The spirit moves on. The spirit goes through death, the soul goes through death, and then the soul will stay alive all the way till just before the Day of Judgment, when everything will be caused to, dead, uh, to die. That's when the soul will also die. The body is dead already at the time of death. But the soul is living. The soul is living. When the time of death comes, the body is dead, spirit is alive. When the time of the blowing in the horn comes, the spirit dies as well. The soul dies as well. And when the horn is blown again, second time, both body and both spirit, both soul and body come back up again. Both. But this time there's a big difference. Do this brothers, you can do this. On the day of judgment you can't do this. Except if Allah wills. See here, the body is not under your command at all. On the day of judgment, the body is not under my command, it's not under your command, it's going to be under Allah's command. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran. نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah says, today, You've got no control over your mouths and over your ears and over your tongues, over your hearts, whatever you've got, you had. They were amana. They were mine. 
And today I take control over them and I will seal your mouths. I will seal you, I will take control of your hands. I will tell you hands, tell me what did you do, or hand. What did this person make you do? What did he make you do? The foot, yeah? You know when you walk to the masjid, yeah? You walk to the masjid, just, just wriggle your toes brothers, wriggle your toes, go on. You remember this part, you, you forget my whole talk. Well wriggle your toes, just that, wriggle your toes, go on, wriggle them. Yeah, you'll remember this part of the talk, you'll remember this part of the talk. And it'll make you remember the, the whole of this, what I'm saying. This foot, on the day of judgment, you get there, the foot will be talking and saying, Oh Allah, this soul used me as the amana and the trust you gave to him to take it to the masjid, to Ahabbul Bilad ila Allah. Tashhadu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksipun. It will witness, it will witness. And when a person takes it to the places of haram, it will witness as well. And the person on the Day of Judgment will say, Why? لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا قَالُوا أَنْتَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْتَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ The person will try to curse his own foot, his own hands. He'll curse his own tongue, curse his own eyes, curse his own ears. And they will say, when he'll say, why do you argue? Why do you witness against me? And they will say, قَالُوا أَنْتَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْتَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Allah has made us speak and Allah will make all of His creation speak today. Allah makes all of them speak because these are His. These are not yours. Who are you? Who are you? We are only a soul inside. And Allah knows this programming He's done. The programming is what? That the body and soul together, the material is always pulling downwards. And the soul part, the spiritual part is always pulling upwards. There's a search inside the human being to find something greater. Even in the non-Muslims. Non-Muslims, why do you think philosophers exist? The philosophers that think about beyond what we see. Why does man think beyond what we see? Because of the soul. The soul searches and it won't, it won't stop searching. The soul looks for peace. The soul looks for peace. The body is only a mechanism to receive peace. But the soul is the real one that, that can be content. Without something that Allah has made a functionality with this body, the soul cannot find eternal peace. It can't find eternal peace. See, Allah has talked about the inner part of our bodies and has given it different names. And according to these different names, there's going to be different ways we find our attachment to either this world or to the next world. And my brothers, some of us, and my sisters that are listening, some of us, we find this world sweet and our material body is very much attached to, the, to this world. Why? Because we have tasted the sweetness of this world, but we haven't tasted the sweetness of the next world. See, when you take in your, let's say you, you, you're sitting down and you eat, you're sitting down to eat, okay? You're sitting down to eat, so, or you're having a cup of tea, right? So, normally normal people will take two sugars in their tea, right? How many sugars? One, two, depending on the spoon size, yeah? yeah. Depends on that. When people tell you how many sugars, what do you say? Show me the spoon first. <laughs> Because sometimes this food is different. Anyway, one sugar, two sugars, whatever it is. Let's say you're used to two sugars. You're used to two sugars. And somebody basically gave you two sugars. You're going to be fine with it. You'll be fine with it. But the thing is, when you taste something sweeter than that, and you get used to that, and the two sugars are not going to be enough. Yes or no? Two sugar won't be enough. You're sitting with sweetness and you've got a whole bowl of fruits. So you've got apples, you've got pears, I'm making you hungry now. You've got mangoes, exotic fruits, you've got pineapple and so on, yeah? If you have the mangoes first and then you have the apples, how will the apples taste? Come on, how will they taste? On a, in a normal situation, apples are not going to taste that sweet. 
But if you have the apples first, and then you have the mangoes next, what happens? <coughs> you find, yes, apples were nice as well, and then the mangoes were even nicer. Yes? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said, Inna dunya hulwa khadira. He has said, this dunya, this world, is sweet and it's green. Sweet and green. So he has named this sweetness. He has said, this dunya is sweet. sweet. This is in terms of our material body. We will find it sweet. This is in one hadith, and it's a sahih hadith. In a separate hadith, Rasulullah says, Whoever has done one of three things or three things, wajada halawat al-iman. That person has found the sweetness of iman. So he has said there's a sweetness of iman. And he has said there's a sweetness to this world. And the fact is that the two sweetnesses are, are different. This dunya is sweet. Let's, let me not, let me not, you know, some people say, you know, why, why is it that Allah has prohibited this and prohibited that and prohibited this and people question. You know, it's enjoyable. I'll, I'll say this, you know, astaghfirullah azim but I better uh, admit to the truth. The truth is, sin, when you're in the nature of sinning, is enjoyable. That's why Allah has used the word tamatta. He has said, فَتَمَتَّعُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلًا قَلِيلًا He has said, you may enjoy temporarily this lowly life. كُلُوا وَتَمَتَّعُوا قَلِيلًا إِنَّكُمْ مُجْرِمُونَ كُلُوا وَتَمَتَّعُوا قَلِيلًا إِنَّكُمْ مُجْرِمُونَ Eat and drink. Eat and drink. And enjoy, enjoy, or just eat and enjoy this this world. Little bit, because you can't enjoy too much. The nature of this world is, you can't enjoy too much, because this sweetness of this world doesn't last very long. There's a bitterness that comes after the sweetness. There's a bitterness after that comes with the sweetness. It's like, have you had pomegranate? Come on, guys. Have you had pomegranate? Yeah. Rumman. Yes? yes? You had pomegranate. Yeah, it's nice and sweet, isn't it? Yeah? Nice and sweet. You take the you take the pips, put it into your mouth, yeah? It's nice and sweet, yeah, until you bite into the seed. Is that sweet? It's not that sweet. It's okay, it's not that sweet. The same thing about this world. There's a sweetness outside of it. But inside, when you get to the inner part, it's not that sweet. And it only lasts for a very short time. The sweetness of this world lasts for a very short time. Whereas the sweetness of the Akhirah is everlasting. The sweetness of getting, to, uh, getting the spiritual body attached to Allah is everlasting. The sweetness of getting to know Allah and to make the heart be attached to Allah is when you get full, full serenity, calmness, peace in life, <coughs> peace in mind. So the biggest peace is the peace inside here. The biggest peace is peace inside here. You know, some people they, they think that, you know, inshallah, if I get, you know, if I move from where I am right now and I get a bigger house, uh, go for a three bedroom, then I'll go for a four bedroom, then I'll buy a flat on the side. Then once I get my flat, then I'll rent that one out. Then I'll buy a second flat and I'll rent that one out. Then I'll buy a third one and then I'll convert into these houses and I'll sell this one in the marketplace. I get another property, another property. And then my car, mashallah, turn to micro, micro to something like a BMW. And then I'll be in my nice Merc. And, be, and then I'll have two cars and three cars and I'll be living. Uh, yep. And they're just dreaming on. All right. They're dreaming on. These, these guys, I tell you one thing, yeah. Most people who think like, there's only a few people that are lucky that, that make it through. And most of them that even make it through, they've got a lot of bitterness that they, that, they, that they look at if they don't have the sweetness of the Akhirah inside the hearts. Yeah? If they don't have it. And I tell you one thing, is that most of these people that, that dream of these, this house and this thing, this thing and so on growing and the whole world that they're going to get for themselves, yeah? They, they see all of that, but... What is happening to them is they are making calculations based on this material world. 
and they're making calculation on the sweetness of this world and they're making calculation for themselves but only for a temporary time for only for a temporary time and what happens is Rasulullah has told us two things there's two types of ghina see the word ghina means richness and the word ghina is independence ghina means richness so for example rajulun ghani in arabic means a rich man but rajulun ghani can also mean an independent man someone who's independent rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that the real richness the real richness is the richness of the heart al ghina ghina al qalb See, a man who's sitting here and saying, I'm going to get this house and that car and this thing and that thing. He is trying to get rich, but rich of the material body, rich in terms of this lowly life. And that person cannot ever get content. Contentment won't be there. Unless he is contenting, making his heart content. Allah says, Inna insana layatugha. Allah says what? He says, man starts to go beyond Allah's limits. When? When he feels that he has become rich in a sense that is independent from God. Or he be, he's become independent from necessities and wants and things that are around him. He's independent. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give him contentment. Allah says in the Holy Quran what? He says, Man kana yuridu al hayat al dunya. Allah says, Whoever wants this world, whoever wants this lowly world, nu'tihi minha. I'll give you part of it. Allah's bargain is what? You want to go for the world, I'll give you part of it. And Allah says, Man kana yuridu al akhirah. Whoever wants the next world, nazid lahu fi harthi. I will always continue to ex excel and exceed his cultivation. So if you're after the Akhirah, it's truly growing. If you're after this world and your focus is on this world, then Allah says that I'll give you a portion of it. Another part of the Holy Quran in Surah Isra, Allah says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمْ Allah says, whoever wants this, this quick, quick thing, the world is very quick. The world is something hasty. The world is something you want straight away, right now. Akhirah is something in the distance. Akhirah is something is not tangible. Akhirah is something you can't see. Akhirah is in the distance. But the world is right here, right now. There's women, there's money, there's gold, there's temptation, there's things that the material body can enjoy straight away. But the Akhirah, the spiritual body, it can't enjoy all these things straight away. It has to wait for the, for the fulfillment, rot, nourishment and all that, for the full sweetness. It has to wait for the Akhirah. Yes, it will have sweetness time and again in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of us, when we are doing zikr of Allah, when we are doing salah, when we are doing some kind of ibadah and so on, now and again Allah gives us a sweetness in our ibadah. Yes or no brothers, come on. Now and again you feel really good. Oh man, I wish I could stay like this in this state. Oh Allah! Oh. And you really feel it outpouring your heart. But that doesn't last. Does it last forever, brothers? It doesn't last. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He made that last for us, if He made that last for us, and for a long while, and if He never gave us the, the feeling inside ourselves of sometimes, you know, going against our desires, not feeling like coming to the masjid, not feeling like worshipping Allah, then we wouldn't get the reward that Allah has kept for us in the next life. See, the reward Allah gives us when we feel sweet about worshipping Allah, yeah, is nothing in comparison with the reward when we don't like doing something and we do it. Have you, have a, I'm sure, uh, I'm, I hope you've understood what I'm trying to say to you. See, when, when, we are like, when I like to do something, when I like to do my salah, and, Mashallah, Ramadan time, you know, oh, everyone's here and I'm here as well, yeah? Those times when I'm on a high, you get a lot of reward. But when you are making, when you are make, going against your nafs and your soul and you're trying to make it to the musalla, you're trying to do something good. And you're going against your nafs and against your desires. The reward of that, 
Allah knows how many much more times multiplied it is from the time when you had your sweet moments. It's much, much, much more. That's why Allah wants to give us a lot more. So He doesn't keep our sweetness all the time with Him. With, with make, when we want to make our worship with Allah and when we are sincere to, you know, when we're trying to make our best sort of uh, ways to get Him to know Allah, we're not always finding that sweetness. Allah gives now and again, now and again. He wants to test us. Because Allah said, I will test you with both. Sharri wal khayri fitna. Evil and good all the time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you. You're going to find doubtful thoughts sometimes. You're going to find that you've got things that are pulling you this way and you want to pull yourself. And Allah loves it when we are pulling in the other direction. We don't know it right now. But subhanAllah, you find in ahadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah boasts to the angels. And He says, Oh my angels, unzuru, oh my angels, look. Look at my servant. Look at my servant, what my servant is doing for me. Allah, to Allah, when He, when he hasn't given us the sweetness into, in our hearts, and we're making that effort, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is more real worship. We've gone against ourselves. We haven't seen Allah. And we're going to do the best what the Sharia has said when even going against our desires. Allah wants to see that because Allah loves that. Allah loves that. Why? Because He can look at His servant. The servant is not, he's not, he's not got anything. He's not got anything in His heart to tempt Him to come towards Him. But He still comes. He still comes, SubhanAllah. Anyway, going back to this thing about Ghina. The man who is looking at this world and he looks at this world in terms of its, its temptation. Allah will give, Allah says, lahu fiha ma nasha. I'll hastily give what you want in this world, quickly, I'll give it to you. But if you haven't made your connection with Allah, thumma ja'alna lahu jahannam. After that, you've got hellfire. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةِ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا Whosoever wants the akhirah, and they strive for, see Allah has used the word striving for the akhirah, because you have to sometimes run for the akhirah. My brothers, when we are doing exercise, when you are getting yourselves fit, there's a point when your stamina says to you that that's enough and so on, and you push it a little bit more. And then basically you get to a stage when you say, no, 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 that's enough. But you push it a bit more. As long as you're pushing a bit more and you're pushing a bit more, you then, you know, in the beginning you could run five minutes and you flat out. Yep. And later on you can run for a half an hour to one hour jogging and you're still all right. Yes or no? When you, when you carry on there, وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعَيَهَا when you carry on saying, yes, I'm going to do a bit more for Allah, and I'm going to do this thing for Allah, and I'm going to add that thing for Allah, and that thing for Allah. Allah says, I will fully appreciate, I'm going to fully appreciate the striving that you have done for the Akhir and for the next world. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is, He makes for the one who's attached to this world, and his material body is attached to this world, and he sees all the material of this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will might give, make him rich slightly. Not make him be slightly, but what will happen is that his heart is not independent. That's why Rasulullah said, Al ghina, ghina al qalb, the real richness is the richness of the heart. See, a man who's sitting down who has little, a man who's sitting down who has little, he might be in a three bedroom house and he's content, he's happy, he's doing shukr. He says, Subhanallah, there are people in the world who don't have a shelter over their heads and Allah has given me three bedroom house. The man who's even got a flat, two bedroom flat, one bedroom flat, whatever it is that you're living in, there's two ways of looking at anything Allah has given us. One is with shukr and one is with, with kufr. The shukr and kufr. Allah has said, Fashkur, uh, Allah has said, Fadkuruni adhkurkum. Remember me, keep me in your mind, I'll keep you in my mind. You keep me in your mind, I'll keep you in my mind. You show me thanks, don't be ungrateful to me. The grateful person is whatever Allah has given me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This is Ghina al Qalb. This is when, see, the heart is not a slave anymore. I'm not a slave anymore. I'm not a slave of this dunya. The dunya does not demand upon me that I should wish for the next great car. 
and wish for the next great business, and wish for the next great expenditure, profit or sales or whatever I've got. I'm not a slave of it. Yes, if Allah gives it to me, I say again, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> if Allah gives it to me, Alhamdulillah. If Allah gives me more, Alhamdulillah. And if Allah gives me more, Alhamdulillah. If Allah doesn't give it to me, Alhamdulillah. If Allah doesn't give it to me, not inna lillah. <laughs> if Allah doesn't give it to me, Alhamdulillah. Because Allah is doing me a favor. If sometimes Allah gives me too much, then I might start to, you know, get the material body, might take over the spiritual body. And I might get too attached to this, and my akhirah is going to get spoiled. And Allah sees all the reward I'm going to lose in the akhirah. So He stops me there and then. He stops me. Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ Allah says, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ If Allah had given an expansion of provisions to everybody, if Allah said, okay, you want this? Take it. And you want that? Take it. And you want this much? Take that. Allah says, لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ There would have been a lot of corruption on the earth. There would have been a lot of corruption on the earth. To stop me from going to the sinful way, Allah SWT will stop me somewhere. That's called Qadr. That's called Qadr. Qadr is when he's going to stop me somewhere. And when he stops me, I'm going to recognize that Allah is doing the best thing for me. He stopped me there. He doesn't want me to go. Maybe in the future he'll give me a bit more. Right now he's decided that's how much I should get. That's how much I've got. Alhamdulillah. Whatever situation, وَقَدَّرَ اللَّهُ تَقْدِيرَ Allah says in the Holy Quran, I've given every person a proportion. Allah says, Allah says in the Holy Quran, that if I willed, عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah says, I've got everything. I've got a storage of everything you could ever, ever, ever want to desire for. وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ But I'll only give it to you in portions. So what's happening here is, the one whose material body is attached to dunya and he's tempting for more and he's tempting for more. He's sometimes tempting for something that is not written for him. He's tempting for something that is not written for him. And sometimes these brothers, you know what they do or these sisters what they do? Is that they try and go so far to slightly rip off someone. Yeah? Because they think they're going to make that little extra bit. And they try to like, yeah, do a little dodgy deal here. And then bend the rule here. And then bend the rule there. Yeah? And they think, you know, inshallah. You know, they say, Imam Sahib, you know, if, if Imam Sahib, you know, please tell, tell me the answer. What's the answer? Uh, if I win the lottery and I basically build a masjid with it, is, is it alright? <laughs> if I did the lottery and then I build a masjid with it, is it alright? Like, can I take the rest of it? You know, because I did Allah favor, inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa <laughs> See, bending the rules and bending the rules, what happens is, if Allah's written for you, you're going to get 20,000 pounds in one year. From one Laylatul Qadr to another Laylatul Qadr, Allah wrote, this person, I've written for him 20,000 pounds and 586 pounds and 22 pence. If Allah wrote that. It will be precise as something is written for us. Then you can only get that. And you cannot get a penny more, you can't get a penny less. So the brother who does a dodgy deal here and a dodgy deal there, he might make something extra more than the 20,000 pounds. He might go to 25,000, 30,000. But by the time he reaches before the next Laylatul Qadr, somewhere or another way, Allah will take that money away from him. His business is going to make a loss here. His employees stole some money from here. He basically had his roof leaking. His car basically got an accident by someone. It wasn't his fault. He was just driving and boom. Yeah. So he's lost some money there. He's got a claim over here. Oh, Bangladesh, somebody's calling him. He has to send some money over there. You know, he better give it. Oh, some, someone asked for his, oh, this, that, oh. But in the end, 20,000 pounds, 500 and whatever, 22 pence is exactly what he's going to get by the end of the year. So the one who desired more and his material body was attached to this, what did he do? Did he get anything extra? He didn't get anything extra, but he was running around like a rat in a race, trying to get it. But the one whose heart is content with what Allah has given, one whose heart is content, he's not going to desire for more. He'll carry on working normal. He's not going to sit down. See, the other thing is I'm going to sit down and say, Allah, 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 Allah. My wife says, ah, oh, the bill is here. Okay, 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 calm down. 
Allah, 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 Allah. And basically, after a little while, you know, I'm not getting, I'm not doing any work, you know, and I, I grab my son, hey, give him some money, bills here, yeah, force him to take the money out of him and pay the bills, right? that's not really right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we have to work for ourselves. And also at the same time, do a shukr for what Allah has given. At the same time, just basically work for what Allah has written for us in our qadr. And you'll get what Allah has written for our qadr. But the main thing I was saying is that there's an inner part and there's an outer part. There's a ghina, there's a, there's a richness in here in the heart. And there's an outside, there's a richness. We want the richness of the heart. Because that man, alhamdulillah, whatever condition you put him in, he's going to be content. Contentment. Contentment. And being independent from people and so on is a very, very high quality of people. Within people is a very high quality. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to pray to Allah and he used to ask Allah for the right kind of richness. Allahumma inni, he says, Allahumma, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ghinan yutghini. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from a richness that will make me exceed your limits, cross your boundaries. I seek refuge in such a one. Oh, please Allah, don't give me that kind of richness. And don't give me this kind of poverty, such a poverty that will make me be forgetful of you. Because poverty can take a person the other direction as well. Now we've got the, bod we've got the material body brothers. I've got the spiritual body. Now it's a game of which one we're giving more food to. Both of them are having food. What are both of them having? What are both of them having? Food. You know when you take food in your body, yep, when you take food in your body, which, which body is getting that one? The material body. What food does the spiritual body get? What food does the spiritual body get? Ibadah and worship to find and main thing is what? Dhikr of Allah, so the mind, when the mind basically is connected to Allah subhanahu, whether it's in Salah, whether it's in uh, Hajj or whatever it is, when the mind is connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the spiritual body is getting its food. The spiritual body is getting its food and that's getting stronger. That is why when the month of Ramadan comes, Allah gives us an opportunity to weaken the material body and to strengthen the spiritual body. There's a, two, there's a two process, there's two things that are processing here, not one. Most people, they only do one, they just don't have food, don't have drink, that's fine, all day, they're not going to do that. But what has happened is, they haven't done the second part, which is to strengthen their spiritual body. There has to be a two-way process. You don't have food, you don't have drink, you've weakened the, spirit, you've weakened the material body. And the spiritual body, when you give the dhikr, when you give doing an extra tilawa, I say extra, I don't say just tilawa. Some people do just tilawa in Ramadan and not outside, no. Extra tilawa in Ramadan, extra dhikr in Ramadan, extra things then, the spiritual body is now getting stronger and stronger and getting inclined towards the next life. My brothers, this spiritual body that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, it has different states. The mind is called the Qalb. What is the mind called in Arabic? Qalb. Qalb is something that switches, turns around. Allah has said in the Holy Quran one part, He has said, His heart is sinful. Allah has said, His heart is sinful. Why? Why did, where did Allah say that? Allah said in Surah Baqarah. People are making transactions. People are making transactions and they basically made an agreement and now they're trying to go back on their words and they know what they're doing is wrong. Allah says, فَإِنَّهُ آثِمٌ قَلْبُ His heart is sinful. His heart is sinful. Now, there's a worse condition than that. When there's, a, when there's a disease in the heart. When the heart actually gets diseased, the mind actually gets diseased. What is that? Allah has said in the Holy Quran, فَيَطْمَعَ الَّذِي فِي قَلْبِهِ مَرَضٍ See, when, when brothers look at sisters unlawfully, when sisters look at brothers unlawfully, when that eye is cast unlawfully, the reason why that is happening is why? Allah has told us, Allah has told the real reason. The reason is not 
that you basically got um, something within your within your mind something within your mind that is uncontrollable or no 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 the reason is that there is a disease inside here there's a disease so if any brother if any brother at any moment looks at a sister and they find it lustful straight away what does that mean tell me if you look at a sister and you you couldn't turn your eyes away straight away because rasulullah said فَإِنَّ لَكَ الْأُولَى وَلَيْسَتْ لَكَ الْأُخْرَى He has said, you, the first one, the, the unintentional glance, unintentional look, that's fine. Allah won't take you to account for that because that's unintentional. You just, you just saw her, you didn't know she was there. Yeah, it's not that you, knew, you know that she's there, you know that she's there, and you go, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah? We're not talking about that. We're talking about you don't know and you just suddenly look the first, first glance, Rasulullah said, that one is fine. But the second one that you look, if a person looks a second time, or what some may do is that they basically look and they say, well, oh, it's still the first one, 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 that's it. That was the first one, no, no, that's not right either. Yep. One short glance, unintentional, that's done, khalas. But if a person looks a second time, if a person prolongs the look, what does that mean? What's going on on your inside? On my inside? If I do that, what happens? What does it mean? Come on, guys. What's inside? What's, what's the condition of my heart? It's got an illness. It's sick. Because Allah said in the Quran, Surah Al Ahzab, in the beginning of the 22nd Jews, Oh, women, wives of the Prophet, oh, wives. When you talk to them, don't talk to them in a low, nice, nice, sweet sort of voice. You know, ding, 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 ding. Yep, pick it up. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> oh, alaikum assalam. Yes. How can I help you? If you use that kind of tone if for a sister, if she uses that, then she's probably not only talking, but she might be inviting. Yep, she might be inviting. Allah said, "Fala taqdana bil qawl." Don't soften your voice when you're talking. So if a sister, if you if you ring a brother's house and sister goes, "Salam alaikum," yes, what is that inside? Thank you, wa alaikum salam. Don't feel she's being rude. She's not being rude. If she's acting upon this part of the Quran, she's not being rude, because to lower the voice, to soften the voice. The one who has a disease in his heart, he will yearn. He will start thinking, ah, geez, Oh my God, she spoke to me so nicely. Oh my God, I wonder what she meant. Oh, yeah. The guy's got, the guy's got a diseased heart. If you're walking on the street and if you see someone that you're not supposed to look at, if you, if you see someone that you're not supposed to look at, and you look at them, the heart is diseased. If you don't look at them on a regular basis, on a regular basis, you don't look at them. Your eyes keep on, you know, as soon as you see the first, you, you just stay, you know, you just look away. If that is your regular, regular way, then inshallah, bidnillah, you've got no disease in your heart. That's a way to test it. From that, if a person gets more sinful, if there's more temptation to all this world, there's a Sahih Hadith in Muslim where Rasulullah has explained that every time a person is sinning, there's a black dot that is placed onto the heart. There's a, there's a black dot that will be spotted onto the heart. And it basically moves from a sinful heart, right? I'm going to show you this, look, towards your, towards your sort of left, yeah? So the sinful heart, and then it becomes a heart with a disease. And then if it carries on and there's more black dots and more black dots and more black dots thrown on it, then it basically turns into a heart that has become hard. Allah said, Thumma qasat <laughs> What does that mean? It doesn't mean that if you rip the heart open, you're going to find a solid heart inside here. <laughs> It doesn't mean that, doctor, doctor, please check my heart, you know, it's trying to soften it up, beat it up with something, yeah? It doesn't mean that. 
Well, what it means is, you know, your mind, your mind, the way you think, you're not going to think, your, your thinking is not going to be inclined to the Akhirah. You're thinking you're very much more towards the dunya now, to the lowly world. And the things around women, money, you know, tangible things, material things, they're very close to you and you're very attached to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at that point, Allah says, if they carry on, what happens is, they get in the heart, they get ghulf, ghulf, which is now, it's getting, or ghulf could be before the hardening of the heart, is basically, you know, stopping the truth from coming inside. Ghulf is when it's getting so hard and so difficult for the mind to see the truth and accept the truth as it is, that it basically now, Allah said, no, it's basically now getting jammed up. Then the one above that is sealing it. When a person sins and sins so much and goes so far to the other side, Allah said, Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim. Allah sealed the heart. That means that they just won't see the truth when the truth comes to them. They won't hear the truth as they're supposed to hear the truth. They won't listen or accept the truth when they're supposed to accept it. But if a person, the same hadith in Muslim says, when a person does a good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gets an angel to drop a white spot onto the heart. So even if you're sinful or you've got a diseased heart, whatever it is, you can reverse it. By doing good actions. Every time you do a good action, there's a white dot. Every time you do white, 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 until you move from the sealed heart to the heart to, to the to the one that's got basically blocked up heart. From the blocked up heart to the like the hard kind of heart, from the hard kind of heart to the ill heart, and from the ill heart to the sinful heart, then from the sinful heart you start to move away now to a heart that is in between. And slowly, slowly when you move more and more, your heart starts to like the Akhirah. And it finds peace with the Akhirah. And Allah has called that in the Holy Quran, Qalbun Salim. What does Allah call it? Qalbun Salim. A heart that finds peace. Not full contentment yet, but peace. Which means that you're inclined to the Akhirah, you're probably praying, you're probably doing good things and so on. So you've got peace in your heart, Alhamdulillah. But there's something beyond that. There's a heart that is beyond that. You can have a peaceful heart. And Allah said, uh, where Ibrahim has said in the Holy Quran, Illa man salim. Except one who comes to Allah with a heart that is peaceful. This is in the Quran, in Surah Al Shu'ara. But a person that goes beyond that, the best heart a person can get is Qalbun Mutma'in. The fully contented heart. The fully contending one. And Allah has said, the only way you will get the fully contending one, Allah said, Ala bi dhikrillahi The only way you will get a fully contented heart that is fully inclined towards Allah, fully inclined towards the Akhirah, fully inclined towards the next life, the only way you will get that is through my remembrance, not through anything else. Not through anything else. Every other way of trying to find contentment inside here is only temporary. So for example, somebody tries to, you know, somebody's troubled. And the way they want to get out of their troubled some situation is that they basically will start to listen to some music. And please, like I said before, when a person is listening to music, person is being with the opposite gender in a haram relationship, they are going to have some enjoyment, which is temporary enjoyment. The bitterness will come later on, but the outer shell is that they will basically find enjoyment. And Allah has said, Zuyina linnasi hubbu shahawati minan nisa. Allah said, He said, I have made in this world, in your minds, what I made adorn to yourself. To all people, to all men, I have made certain things adorned to them. To all men, I have made adorn to them the love of their lustful desires towards women. They have, Allah said, I've, I've put that inside you, that you've got that. That's a test for you to see what you will do with that inside yourself. Well, Banin. Next thing is love of having children. Having children for yourselves. And being around your children. And spending time with your children. That is a love that I've given you, natural love. And 
a love of hoarding wealth, gold, silver, money, cash, whatever I have given to you in terms of hoarding that, you know, that is a love that a man has, a woman has. You want to hoard that for yourselves. Well, Khaylil Musawwama, in the old days, it was fast horses. In these days, it's fast cars. To have cars, to have vehicles, to have transportation that will take you from one place to another place quickly, that's something that's adorned to a, to a human being. Well, an'ami wal harth, to have animals, to have something that you have ownership of, to have cultivation, to have land, to, to have assets, to be ownership of a, to be a landlord, this is something which I've made lovable to yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَٰلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا This is only the temporarily, temporary, lowly life that I've given. وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ Allah has got a better return. If you want to return to Allah in a better way, Allah says, I've got a better way to come back to myself. Now here, my brothers, think. A person will have these desires whether it's towards any one of these things that I've mentioned. And a person has got the Akhirah. Now let me give you a scenario. The scenario here is, you're working at your workplace right now. You're working for another company, some other man's company, who's hired you, who's employed you, and you're working for him. So you go to your job. And you like your workplace. You like it so much. <coughs> You like it so much, you want to make it your home. You want to make your workplace your home. What do you want to do, brother? You want to make your workplace, you want to make it your home. So guy's fanatic about his workplace. He wants to stay there. He wants to, how oh, he loves the toilets in there. The better than the toilets at home. Yeah? He wants to basically, and he thinks that, you know, this is the place to basically be. What kind of person is that? What kind of person is that, brothers? Would you say that a person he's switched on or he's basically losing the plot? <coughs> yeah, what is he doing? He's losing the plot. You'll agree with me. Imagine this is, this world compared to the Akhirah is a toilet. Seriously. You know, this, the, the people who've been to the Akhirah, seen the Akhirah, when they look at this world, this world is nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's dirty. It's disgusting, it's got filth, it's got oppression, it's got people that are fighting over and rivalry over, you know, trivial things. It's got desires inside here, people of hassle and jealousy. The people that are have basically looking at one another and basically doing all sorts of things in this world that they don't basically, they shouldn't do. When they look at the next, from the next world to this world, this world is nothing, absolutely nothing. So the one who's trying to make his workplace, his workplace, make that his home, he's lost the plot. The same way the one who looking at this world, a 60 year life, compared to an eternal life, is absolutely nothing. You at your workplace, one day you're going to be redundant. One day you're going to lose your job, yes or no? One day you're going to move on. One day you're going to be retired. You'll finish. You can't make that your place to live. The same way, this world is not a place to be here forever. And the one who has got that haqiqa or got that reality in his heart and is open, they will not be attached to this world. So for example, the one who's listening to music, they listen to music and they're enjoying the music, right? And they're enjoying the lyrics and they're enjoying the songs and they're enjoying the beats. They get temporary satisfaction. It takes their mind away from the troubles. They don't think about the troubles or they're thinking about how tough, how big, so they might be listening to a, to a rap song and the rap artist is saying, yeah, and they did this to me and they did that to me and then I bust them and I got bop and then I boom boom and da 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 da, yeah. So basically this guy sitting here in his little, you know, cushion armchair is thinking, you know, he's a skinny little guy, yeah? But he's thinking, yeah, my enemy is going to go boom, boom, I'm going to bust them, I'm going to boom, boom, yeah? So he basically gets excited. For a temporary moment, he gets excited. Or perhaps he's in some kind of love. So he wants to express his love. So the guy says, you and me, in our arms, or whatever. And he's basically thinking, ah, oh, ah. Oh. 
I wish that thing basically came true, me and her, us both of us together. So temporarily, he's just taking his mind somewhere else. Or she's taking her mind somewhere else. When they've listened to their song or their music, and one hour's gone, or whatever time has gone back, and they switch it off, they're back to where they were. Nothing has changed. But now what they've done is, they've actually, without realizing, they have now, you know their mind, the mind, see the mind, the qalb, yeah? whatever it has in terms of the hearing, in terms of the sight, in terms of what you put inside your brain, it's now an automatic DVD player. See, Uncle Satan, not Uncle Satan, Iblis, who made a promise to Allah to take all of us to hellfire, he comes back into this heart after you've listened to music and now he's got a whole storage of DVDs to play. He's got DVDs and he's got CDs to play. So basically, when next time you're trying to do something good or you're walking, whatever, he, he only has to come inside and put the CD inside your head. You don't listen to anything inside your mind and what you hear, the boom boom, the bus thing, the dum dum, the dum dum, is playing in the back of your mind. It is. The people who listen to something on a regular basis. If you listen to Quran again and again, tell me brother this is not true or not. That you listen to Quran, you listen to Quran, you listen to Qadi again and again. You're just walking, you're praying, whatever you're doing, the sound comes in your heart. Yes or no? Yes. Automatically it will, because the mind records it. It will play it. So shaitan, what he's done to you is he told you, get away from this temporary by listening to the music. And after you've listened to it, now he's got a few extra DVDs and CDs to play it. When you watch something on TV, when you've got temptation of watching something you're not supposed to watch, when you're doing these things and you're into all of this, you are only adding to the collection of DVDs that you're giving to the shaitan to play inside your head. If there's something wrong, I'll tell you brother, you will never get rid of that in your life. You can always bring back a memory with that, that you have somewhere in your life that you did something that you were somewhere. At any age, you can bring it back up. Good memories and bad memories, both. You can bring it back up. And what happens is, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu has said, Al-ghina yumbitu nifaqa fil qalb. Music creates hypocrisy in the heart. What does music create, brothers? Hypocrisy. Because what it does is, when music is there, and you're trying to put inside it the dhikr of Allah, the two things don't mix. The two things don't mix. Why don't they mix? Because one, Allah has created to be calm. Now, guys, if I, if I say this, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Deen Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een now when you listen to that, right, none of you barely moved. But if I was to take all of us into a hall where they've got a nightclub, yeah, and the sound is boom 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 the basically the people inside there they go boom 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 and with the beats, with the beats, yeah, their arms are moving, bodies are moving, boom 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 boom. Now you tell me, tell me why is it the case that people are doing that? The sound has an immediate effect on the body. Quran you listen to, you are content. Yes or no brothers, come on. You listen to Quran, you're content. You're content. You listen to the music, then it's creating, there's some effect that takes place. You put it, you turn a love song on, it will bring about passions inside yourself. You, see, you put a song on about a street boys and being rough and tough and drugs and whatever, it brings about a different side inside you. It automatically does that. Whether you intend or you don't intend, it will do that. Mm. It will have that effect. Even like, you play classical music to 50s and 60s people who love listening to classical music. They're going... Da, da, da. Because the, the sound is a melodious, soft, soft one. You play some kind of rap or some R&B or whatever it is that they have outside there, people are going to be different towards that. Why? Sounds have got a direct effect onto the bodies. Uh, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziya, he said a beautiful thing. 
in Ighathatul Lahafan. He said a beautiful thing inside there. He said that music, songs in one's heart only make one move away from the Rahmah of Allah. And tilawa of the Quran only make one come closer to Allah. So if a person is listening to the tilawa, a person is moving more towards Allah. And when a person listens to music, he's moving away from Allah. Some people, they're doing both. They're coming forward, they're going back. They're coming forward, they're going back. And the new bid'ah that started is that you put an Islamic song, yeah, nasheed, with music. Yeah, with music. So you might have, you know, something, uh, Ya Rasulullah, uh, whatever, or something, I don't know, all these music that they've got, and they've got bada 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 in the background, yeah? And they've got these beats, and, the, and then the flutes, and the songs, and the, the instruments, and everything with it. They've mixed both of them up. And you see the effects. I'll show you, I'll tell you the effects. If you find, if you find a traditional nasheed group, the original sunnah, you sit in a halaqa, you sit in a gathering, one person gets up, or one person from the crowd sings. Normally Rasulullah used to tell Hassan bin Thabit to get up. Hassan bin Thabit would say poetry in the love of the Prophet ﷺ. Sahabas would have their heads down or looking at the Rasulullah ﷺ, or just having their heads down. And in love of the Prophet ﷺ, they would have tears rolling from their eyes. Hassan bin Thabit would say one with love of Allah, or one of the other Sahabas would make a nasheed about Allah. Or you can imagine when, they, when Rasulullah ﷺ was coming to Medina, the Tala al Badru alayna. What was the focus, brothers? The focus is on the Prophet ﷺ coming to Medina. What happens to the bodies when they listen to these, these nasheeds? Where the munshid, the one who's singing, is saying just for the sake of Allah. He's moved. People are moved. And he doesn't want people to look at him. He doesn't want people to turn their heads towards him. Now, you've got these concert, nasheed concerts. When they put this music together with nasheeds, the sister's going, Ah, ah brother, we love you, whatever. I wonder if you're married. Because I'm not. <laughs> they're singing. And they're basically you know, encouraging sisters to scream. To stand up. To yell. To move their arms about. Yeah? What is this? Where's the sunnah? Because, you know why? Because shaitan has basically mixed the music with it. And once the music comes in, you're going to find the body moving. Yeah, it's a natural thing. Music will have an effect on the body. Nasheed and Tila will have a different effect on the body. And you cannot be dishonest with oneself. And now a whole culture of people are growing up with both of them that are mixed. What I would ask you to do is if you're looking for contentment, if you're looking for contentment, just read the Quran. And if you don't find contentment, if you don't find contentment, it means you've got a heart other than the heart that is content, other than the heart that is sound and safe with Allah. You've got some, something inside here which is a diseased heart. Or you've, you've got a sinful heart. And you just have to carry on doing it. Just, just carry on doing it, brother. Sister, just carry on doing it. Just carry on reading the tilawah every day. Just do the tilawah and do the best as you can. One day when your heart starts to clear up, yep, you'll be emotionally moved. You will find that you're going to get tingling feeling through your body. You're going to find tears rolling down from your eyes. Allah says, When the recitation of the Quran is recited to the meaning to believers, the Iman only increases. Iman increases. If you find that, Alhamdulillah, say Alhamdulillah, you've got a good heart. If you find sometimes you're not moved, sometimes you are moved. Then you've got both. Sometimes you're moving here, sometimes you're moving there. You won't get always sweetness. Don't always ask for the sweetness like I said earlier. But the thing is, if you're always content with the tilawah. See, one who is content with the tilawah of the Quran, they do not need music to calm them down. They don't need it. Because it's horrible. 
It's horrible. See, one who has, con one who has made themselves content with the dhikr of Allah and the akhirah, they don't need to be lustful towards this world. They don't need to be. I'll tell you brothers, I'm going to say this here, that you know when you've got certain brothers who are not married, okay, they need to get married. Then there's certain brothers who get married and they're still not satisfied. They're still not happy. They're looking for, you know, other ways or other more numbers of, you know, azwaj mutahharat, whatever. Yeah? Wives to fulfill their, fulfill their passions and desires. One thing I must say is that you better question yourself. Do I want to remarry, my, remarry again because I've got a disease in my heart and it's never going to be content? Do I want to do that? Or is it because truly there is some other reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's messenger will be happy with me if I, do, if I go ahead? Because most of the brothers that want to go ahead, I'm telling most, I'm not saying all, most of the brothers, they're only doing it because this thing is not satisfied. This thing is not satisfied. When a person's heart is satisfied, once your fulfillment of your desires is finished, done, a person does not need to look further beyond a lot more. A person doesn't need to do that. See, if a person is, is in this world and they've got regular temptations of money and they, they hear people who've made money and they yearn, they have a yearning towards it, a craving towards that and they want to make a, a serious amount of money quickly. If you've got that, you need to question the heart. It all starts inside here. What is inside here? And you can assess yourself. You can assess yourself. Um, there's, a, there's a hadith that says, Hasibu qabla antu hasabu. Take yourself to account before your real account comes on the Day of Judgment. Hasibu qabla antu hasabu. Take your own account because every man can take his own account in this world. Every woman can take his own account in this world. And the temptations of this world, my brothers, Allah says, Qul a'unabbi'ukum bi khayrin min thalikum. Shall I tell you about something better than this? Allah says, Lakin in ladina taqaw rabbahum. Those who have made their mind always conscious of Allah. The people who have got content hearts, their, their mind is always about Allah, always about Allah. Allah, Allah, what can I do for you? Allah, what can I do for you? Allah, I've done this for you. Allah, I've done that for you. Allah, Allah, I want to, I want to basically, I, I want to try, I want to get and get to you and meet you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow a person to commit suicide. So he allows the person to pretend to meet him before the actual meeting. And that is the name of Hajj. What is that the name of? Hajj. Allah says, okay, you want to come and meet me? Because we've been praying every day, our mind is with Allah. We've been fasting every year, our mind is with Allah. I've been doing dhikr every day and our mind is yearning Allah, yearning Allah, yearning Allah. Allah says, okay, pretend to die. Take only two pieces of cloth. Dress yourself like you dress you would dress yourself when you're dying. And come towards my house and say, I'm here, I am here, I am here, there is no one except for you, I'm here. You called me, I'm here. Labbaik, labbaik, la sharika, laka labbaik. That is about Hajj. Hajj is a fanatic state of trying to be with Allah, meet Allah, yearn Allah. Hajj is not about Panasonic. Hajj is not about, you know, the latest TV out there, the latest deal. Hajj is not about getting the Burger King inside your body yeah, before you return. The halal Burger King. Bruv, bruv, I've got to try that before I get back. Bruv, I'm not going to get another chance, man. Hajj is not about roaming around all those markets and places. No, Hajj is about labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Oh Allah, you called me, I'm here. Oh Allah, I'm here. Oh Allah, I'm here. I am here. Oh Allah, where are you? Allah. I'm here. Where are you, oh Allah? I'm, I've come here to find you, Allah. Arafat is what? Standing on the Day of Judgment. It's a reminder of standing on the Day of Judgment. A person is, is, is now pretending to go through the Akhirah. Because pretending to go through the Akhirah. That is Arafat. So my brothers, what I want to say is that there's a, there's a, yeah, there's a spiritual, come back to the real essence of what I've said, there's a spiritual body and there's a material body. And it's which one we're feeding? Which one is stronger? Which one is taking me which way? Depends upon what I have done to my two bodies. It's all down to me. And Allah has given me a test. And Allah wants to see which one I'm going to, what kind of heart I'm going to bring back to Him. And there's a, you know, Allah's given me time. So brothers, 
while my time is still there, there's a moment for reflection. If the temptation of this world is here, it's only because I have put myself in this condition, whatever that temptation is. Anyway, Zakumullah Khair, it's been very nice spending this evening with yourselves. Please make dua for me. I'll make dua for all of uh, yourselves, inshallah. May Allah accept your efforts. May Allah accept this masjid. May Allah accept the people who come to this masjid. May Allah give us tawfiq to act myself first and then all of us to act upon whatever has been said. And may Allah take us close to Him and give us the temptations of and the real desire for the next world, for the akhirah, for Jannah, for Jannah. And not to be attached to this world in a way that we forget the akhirah, we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillah.